I love designing jewelry in extremes. I love creating that handcrafted quality that comes from the use of hand tools that produce hammered surfaces and contrasting textures with features that can be appreciated close up as well as afar. Priscilla Laurel is meant to highlight the theatrical quality of big and bold pieces. I come from a performing background, so the jewelry is part of a performance. So when I think of jewelry on the runway or big events like the Met Gala, it's part of that whole performance aspect of it with its large commanding size and how the jewelry moves with the wearer. As much as I love this tiny delicate ring I designed that I can wear every day, it won't translate to the magnitude of the theater. It's the difference between when things are done on a stage on Broadway and things are done in a close-up of a film. The bold piece of jewelry is meant to be seen from the balcony of the theater. Hey Stylish TV, I'm Cassandra here with the talented Mondo Guetta Project Runway All-Stars Season 1 winner here at the P beautiful Pearl in San Antonio, Texas. We're here to get a quick little interview with him, so how are you feeling today? Uh, I'm good. I'm really excited to be back in San Antonio. The last time I visited, I fell in love. I was supposed to be here for two days. I ended up staying for five days. Oh, wow. Um, and I was so excited about um, the culture, the colorful energy, mm -hmm. you know, just the nice people here. I, I, I have Southwest roots. You know, I grew up in Denver. Um, so I thought it would be really appropriate to invite my mom. And so my yeah. mom's here tonight. So I'm very excited about that. That'll be super fun. Well, we're very excited to see your new collection. Um, what have you been fascinated by recently that really drove you to make this collection? Well, I don't know if I've been fascinated. I've been longing for something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, I grew up in the 90s going to a lot of raves. I'm 40 years old now. I don't feel that about myself anymore. So I really took myself from those mid-90s and used myself as my own muse because I wanted to kind of like create this fantasy world for me. So this whole collection is kind of a nod to 90s rave culture, but also mixing Western roots. So we'll see a lot of, uh, a lot of like Kel print, a lot mm -hmm. of color, of course, a lot of mix of patterns. Yeah. Um, and lots of rhinestones. That sounds yeah. like a lot of fun, for sure. <laughs> oh, and feathers. It gets There's a lot, you oh, guys. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So you use your platform to encourage and inspire people who have both big dreams and big obstacles. Mm -hmm. What um, helped you with all of the obstacles in your life to continue mm -hmm. pursuing on your dreams? I mean... You know, I was always gifted with this creative voice, and I knew that it would lead to something bigger. But when I was diagnosed with uh, HIV at the mm -hmm. age of 23, I really shut down. I got very scared of how I was going to share this information. You know, I was very, it was very easy for me to show, share creative information, but to share that part of me was very, very scary. And it was to the point where I started forgetting about my creative goals, you know, mm -hmm. until I really realized that, you know, I had hit rock bottom and I needed to really move forward and once I got into the show and I told my story that was the moment where I knew that I could have that I could use this platform to educate and inspire other people not only like you said mm -hmm. through creative voice but also through um, through education and conversation about HIV AIDS and it's really the people and the stories that I've heard from um, other people that are on the front lines of HIV we're talking about you know AIDS service organizations in your town we're talking about those people that volunteer there those uh, those counselors you know sisters brothers of people that they know uh, are HIV positive you know and I love hearing these stories, I feel like it's in, it's very, very important to share your story and have open, honest conversations. Of course, yes. And you've definitely been a huge inspiration to a lot of people. Like I said, with all these obstacles, a lot of people would give up. Mm -hmm. But seeing you go forth and becoming the uh, season one winner of the All-Stars, <laughs> for sure, like you didn't give up and it all paid out. I mean... You know, I, I, I think it's, I think, uh, you know, it's easy for me to say from my personal experience that it is easy to give up, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? But sometimes that feels like your only option. Yeah. Um, but for me, I knew that, um, I don't know, somebody was always pushing me, and I'm a very spiritual guy being Latino, you know, I thought yeah, that it was always my grandma, like, encouraging me to keep on going, keep on going, and I always heard her in the back of my head telling me that you can do this, don't be scared, and, you know, mm -hmm. and that's kind of what I've uh, taken with me along this entire journey. And then lastly, uh -huh. um, what have been your favorite moments in your career thus far? 
Oh, geez. You know, I think it's an evolution. I think as a creative person, you always have to honor the process. And for me, it's every opportunity. I think it leads to the next opportunity. You know, like Antonio in 2017 for a discussion at the McNay, and this has led me to tonight where I'm actually mm -hmm. presenting work at the McNay, and I'm so honored because it has been my dream to show work. I didn't know that it was going to be fast. I just knew that it would be some kind of work showing at an art museum, and this is it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Well, fashion is art. Yeah. <laughs> like we thank say you. Here for yes. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Good.